Once upon a time, a prince journeyed many miles and for many days to seek the hand of a beautiful princess in a far-off land. Prince, the king has sent us to greet you as you cross the borders of his kingdom. They welcomed him as a suitor for their beautiful princess. The court was curious. Do you think the princess will like him? We'll soon see.
The prince told the king that he'd come a great distance to ask for the hand of his daughter. The king replied that he was honored by his suit and told him to speak to the princess herself. And so the prince offered his gift to the princess. Schönste Prinzessin, nehmt dieses. But this princess was the most spoiled and capricious princess in the world. Any lout can give me pearls like these if he has enough money. I require more from a suitor. What do you want then? The prince was perplexed. I must have... She wasn't sure what she wanted. I must have the singing, ringing tree. Bring it to me and then I will listen to you. No one knew where the singing, ringing tree grew. Many people had looked for it in vain. Everybody thought that this time the princess had gone too far. She wanted the singing, ringing tree. They couldn't believe it. The singing, ringing tree? No one knew where to find it. It was the magic tree that dispelled all evil. They said that he'd never find it. The princess must be joking. He hadn't any idea where to look for the magic tree. But he would search for it and he would find it even if it lay at the end of the world. Prince asked everyone he met if they knew where the singing, ringing tree grew. The gardener had never seen it, but told him to ride to the seashore where an old farmer lived who would surely know. He asked the farmer if he knew the tree, and if so, where he could find it. But the farmer didn't know either. He said that up in the mountains, there lived a herb woman who would perhaps know. He'd heard that she knew where he could find the singing, ringing tree. But the herb woman was no help either and called him a fool. The prince soothed his horse, which was scared.
a souse to you. What are you looking for? Who are you? I'm the ruler of this kingdom into which you forced your way. You are my prisoner. The prince said he meant no harm and that he was looking for the singing, ringing tree. What will you do with it? I shall use it to woo the princess. He said he would give him the tree, and the prince could scarce to believe his good fortune. Here it is. But the tree would only sing and ring if the princess truly loved him. The prince offered the dwarf gold and precious stones if he would only give the tree to him. But the little man said he would not part with it so lightly. Ask what you will. I shall ask for you yourself if by sunset the tree does not sing. The prince replied that he wasn't worried. When the princess received the tree, she'd accept him and love him, and then the tree would sing. May I turn into a bear if it doesn't happen like that, he said. He reminded him that he had until sunset, and the prince said that his happy future would be settled long before then. The king was very pleased to see that the prince was still alive and delighted when he realized that the prince had the tree. Where was the princess? Look, the prince has brought you the singing, ringing tree. But the princess could hear nothing. The prince explained that the singing of the tree depended on her. It would only sing if she really loved him. What are you thinking of to try to pass off such an ugly thing as that, as the magic tree? And to dare to impose conditions on me, the princess? She told her father that the prince was a liar and that he would betray them. She even said he should be thrown into prison. The king was sad that his daughter should behave in such a fashion. The princess was furious with her father for taking the side of the prince. Now you'll never have the tree, said the king, and the old nurse said that she'd lost a fine prince, but the princess said the subject was ended. The king nevertheless reminded her that the prince had gone halfway round the world for her. He didn't deserve to be sent from the palace in such a way. He was too proud. That was his trouble. He was sure the young man really had the singing, ringing tree. Now she wasn't sure. If he really thought the prince had the tree, he'd better bring him back. Oh, he wouldn't give it to her now. But she insisted that the king should go after the prince. I must have it. She even pretended to cry. And because the king would do anything to please his daughter, he said that he would set out straight away.
Ich gehe ja schon. Eile dich! Make haste. Ruf ein paar Reiter He must hurry and take with him two knights as company, for she must have the tree. Ich will das Bäumchen haben. Why do you threaten me? It's not my fault the tree didn't sing. You should have known the princess is bad-tempered and arrogant. The prince said the dwarf had deceived him. The prince had brought his punishment on himself. He'd said that he'd turn into a bear if the tree didn't sing. Anyway, he'd probably be happier as a bear. He could keep the tree so that he could hear it sing if the princess fell in love with him. He told him not to make fun of him. What could he do with the tree now? If it sang there in the magic kingdom, he would be set free. The tree had a more potent magic than he did himself. Enough of the tree. Then the king saw the tree. He was amazed that the bear could speak. The bear asked what he was looking for. He was searching for the singing, ringing tree. It was for the princess, his daughter, and if the bear would only spare his life, he would give him anything he asked for, even his kingdom. But the bear said he didn't want the kingdom. He only wanted the first person who met the king on his return, and for that person he would give him the singing, ringing tree. They agreed, and the king gave the bear his word for it. The bear reminded him that the first person the king met belonged to him and that he would claim his prize at midnight on the borders of the kingdom. Das du mich ja nicht wieder 
the princess insisted that the nurse should not let her sleep. She didn't want to have climbed to the top of the highest tower for nothing. She wanted to be able to watch from afar off the arrival of her father. Throw them out! Throw them out! The nurse assured her that all the doves had gone. He's coming. The king's coming. Hold your tongue. And then she realized what the nurse had said. The king was coming. He has the tree. He has the tree. Out of the way, keep back. Get back, get back. But she would come out to take the tree. He was distraught that his daughter should have been the first person to greet him. She didn't understand when he told the captain to double the guard. And so, because I was afraid for my life and because I thought my dog would be the first person to greet me, I agreed. And the prince? He'd searched far and wide for him without success. And it was a real bear which gave you the tree? Yes, it was a great, powerful bear with pointed claws and sharp teeth. He didn't know what to do. The princess had an idea. He must send the captain who was brave and strong and should be able to kill the bear. Otherwise, she'd have to go. He couldn't face that. She asked when the bear demanded his due. At midnight, on the borders of the kingdom. who had been turned into a bear was waiting behind a rock. Why have you come? To kill me? Answer! The king told me to. Who met the king first on his return? Who was first? The princess?
Guten Morgen, Prinzessin. Hast du aufgepasst? Hat Did you hear the tree sing? Ich habe nichts gehört. The nurse had heard nothing. Wenn es heute nicht singt, werde ich es If it didn't sing that day, she would burn it. Perhaps it needed the sun, said the nurse. Das weiß ich selbst. She pretended she thought of that too, and said that the sooner she was dressed, she would go into the garden. The king had forbidden it. She must not go outside the castle because of the bear. Nevertheless, the princess was determined to go into the garden. We'll put the tree in here. What will happen to the fish? But the princess was bored with the fish and didn't want them anymore. So she must let the water out. Take them out, hurry up. Now the tree must sing, because it had the best place in the garden. The princess was determined that it should sing, otherwise she would made up her mind to burn it. Be careful, the princess! My father. But it was useless to protest.
Once again, she demanded that he should take her back, but he merely wished her good morning. Guten Morgen. She wanted her silver bath. The water in the pool is clear and cool. But she wasn't used to bathing in a puddle. What are you thinking of? I'm a princess. She wanted to eat from her golden plate. All the bear offered for her midday meal was some berries. She was furious. What are you thinking of? I'm a princess. She wanted her feather bed with its silken pillows. The bear said if she wanted somewhere to sleep, there was plenty of soft moss in the valley. What are you thinking of? I'm a princess. Fly down here and eat these berries. Quickly. Fly here to me. At once. She wondered why the birds wouldn't come to her, why the animals fled when they saw her. The bear must have told them to avoid her. But he said they didn't love her because they didn't see her pretty face as humans did. Only her insolence and pride. And as she behaved, so she would appear. Her nose would turn upwards because she was so proud. She would have lifeless eyes. Her mouth would be bad-tempered, and the gold of her hair would be dimmed. I want to stay just as I am, she said. And beware of wishing that. The princess said she was the most beautiful in the land. Look at me, you stupid bear. She could not, would not believe that this could be herself. But I'm beautiful, she said.
She wished the bear good morning. Good morning, bear. Good morning. Schau mich nicht And she told him not to look at her because she was so ugly. Du hast recht gehabt. But he took no notice and only asked her to help him build a cave. For wen? For me. When she asked, he said that the cave would be for himself. But if she helped him to build it, she could stay there too. But of course she wouldn't want to do that because she was a princess. The bear said she would have to move thousands of stones before the shelter would be ready. He praised her hard work. The princess asked him if he couldn't do something to make the animals come to her. He could do nothing. She could only gain their love if she were loving to them. But she loved no one. Sadly, the princess went to find something for them to eat.
It seemed to have broken its wing. The bear said he could heal it. They needed a bandage. It wouldn't be long now before the wing would be mended. Now she knew why they flew away from her, because of the doves she treated so badly at home. She knew she would never behave like that again. Wait a moment. I'll come and help you.
I know why you always swam away from me, because I mistreated the goldfish in my garden pool. It will never happen again. asked what had happened, and the princess said the fish had become frozen in, so she'd freed it. Now you don't look quite so ugly. That was because she'd shown some love to the animals. He told her it was most important to remember that a good deed was always more powerful than evil magic. She should never forget that. Wait a little, I'll call the bear for help. She called to the bear to come into the Valley of Moss. I know why you ran away, because of the way I used to treat animals. I'm so sorry, I'll never do it again. Now do you see that you can win the affection of animals only if you're kind to them? You're right, dear bear, said the princess. The bear couldn't believe his ears. Did you say, dear bear?
You must go into the house. You're freezing. Don't cry, said the dwarf. Who was he and where did he come from? He said he was the ruler of that land, and he knew that the bear was cruel and wicked. She was astonished. He pretended the bear had destroyed the shelter while she was freeing the animal from the snow. But the bear had always been good to her. He only appeared to be so. He hadn't done very much for her in the way of shelter. Now she began to doubt. He told her to follow him quickly. If the bear found them, he would kill them both. He'd lead her out of danger if she hurried. Why are you standing there? Is it true? Didn't you see for yourself that he destroyed your shelter? She couldn't believe that the bear was wicked. He was always kind to animals. Why do you bother about the bear? Remember how fine life was in your castle. Don't you want your four-poster bed again? And your silver bath? And golden plates? You need never be hungry or cold again. Listen. I have news of your father. She could hardly wait. The dwarf said her father was dying and was calling for her. Could it be true? She'd see that it was true. She must hurry. She must follow the sun during the day and the moon at night and she wouldn't lose her way. Who are you? Don't you know me? No, he didn't know her. She asked him what he was doing there. He'd been ordered to tell every visitor the news that the whole land was in mourning. The king had commanded it. The king? Yes, because a wicked bear had stolen away our princess. 
She asked him where the king was. The guard said that he'd ridden forth with his trusty soldiers to seek the princess and had been gone a whole year. She knew then that the dwarf had lied. And so it was most likely that what he'd said about the bear was also untrue. tree was ringing and singing at last. The wonderful tree. If I truly love the prince, what about the bear? Dear little tree, tell me where the bear is. Is he a real bear or is he the prince? Then he is the prince. She knew then that the wicked little man had laid a spell on the prince. She would take the tree, go back and find the dear, kind bear. She begged him to take her quickly back to the magic kingdom and the bear.
Go quickly, back to safety. Take me back to the Magic Kingdom. Now she knew for certain just how much the dwarf had deceived her. She called for help, but no answer came. Hilfe! Fly quickly. We must help the bear and rescue the fish. You're a wicked creature. The dwarf said she should take the tree away. But the princess was no longer afraid of him. Again he told her to take the tree away. She said he was a mean and wretched creature.
Shouldn't they take the singing, ringing tree with them? No, they must leave it, so that if anyone else found it, it would bring happiness to them as well. And the prince agreed. So they were married and lived happily ever afterwards. <laughs>